The Vermont Ski Museum inducted the Vermonters who served in the 10th Mountain Division in World War II into the Vermont Ski Museum Hall of Fame on November 9, 2003. Their induction recognizes not only the military successes in closing the Italian front, but also the 10th's later dedication to improving all aspects of skiing. After training extensively in Colorado before going to Italy, these men left the Army with a deeper love for and a commitment to the sport. In the 1950s and 60s, skiing as a sport, recreation, and industry flourished thanks to the members of the 10th Mountain Division. Here is their story told by three inductees. 10th Mountain Division was a very unique group. First of all, it was not initiated by the military at all. It was initiated by the National Ski Patrol and uh, particularly by Charles Minard Dill, um, who was head of the ski patrol, the National Ski Patrol, and he pursued the fact that we should have a, a skiing and mountaineering division. The other aspect of the 10th Mountain Division was that it was not initiated by the military, nor was the recruiting done by the military. Um, the, the recruiting was handed over to Minnie Dole, as he was known, and the, the, the National Ski Patrol uh, System Association uh, really uh, contacted all the colleges and, and put out uh, bulletins that there was a ski, ski troop division being formed, and all those college boys, uh, a lot of them ended up in Dartmouth and Amherst and Yale and Williams and uh, colleges all over the country. So as a result, the 10th Mountain Division was composed of quite a, uh, I'll say not an elite group, but a, a specialized group of, of folks who are there, which are not typically uh, people who were conscripted into the Army. Lobbying for a Mountain Division similar to that of Finland began in 1940. The 87th 1st Battalion was activated on November 15, 1941 and sent to train at Fort Lewis, Washington, 22 days before Pearl Harbor. On June 3rd and 4th, 1942, the Japanese hit Dutch Harbor, one of six Army posts in Alaska. The Japanese then withdrew to Kiska, an island 700 miles west. In June 1943, the 87th was assigned to the Aleutian Island Campaign. All of a sudden, we started taking uh, boat trips out to this big boat that uh, we were assigned to. And we went out in the ocean and practiced climbing down rope ladders and getting in a landing barge. Well, what in the world are we <laughs> doing that for? We're ski troops. We ended up making a landing on Kiska, which at that time had been occupied by the Japanese and had built an airport there. That was the first American area that had ever been had invaded by a foreign country. I landed the first barge with my captain, Captain Ed Bailey, who happens to live in Burlington yet. And he was quite a skier in college, UVM, I think it was. Well, after three days of fog and rain, we decided there wasn't any enemies on the course. So we, uh, we just uh, set up, we protected the the beaches where we were being attacked by the seals and the wildlife. Meanwhile, Camp Hale in Pando, Colorado at 10,500 feet was completed in November 1942 and was home for the 10th during their training. At this point, the 85th and 86th regiments were formed. Every barracks had a soft coal furnace and the smoke would just lay in the valley. And just cough, cough. I used to, we called the Pando hand, Hack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You spit up black, black coal all the time. And then we skied, we get above it. There's a to go back down into the barracks. On March 24, 1944, D Series began a 21 day tactical maneuver to test their training. The training there was severe. It was a lot of hiking, a lot of uh, running around in the snow, and it was cold. I think the coldest night we ever experienced, and I don't know whether it was in these series now, but we got down to 45 degrees below zero. From D series, they went to Camp Swift in Texas for flatland infantry training. We went to uh, Texas for flatland training. Mm -hmm. 
Well, when that was announced, morale went right down through the basement. <laughs> <laughs> they brought a general back from Europe. He was made our general and was General Hayes. And the first thing he said was we could put mountain on our patch. And boy, the morale went right up through the roof. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Orders to prepare for transfer to the combat area came in the fall of 1944. By February 2, 1945, there were more than 13,000 enlisted men and officers in Italy with the main objective of bisecting northern Italy, taking the Po Valley, and closing the Italian front. I happened to have been associated with a group that was, was working on Riva Ridge, um, attacking Riva Ridge. There, well, there's the whole story behind that, the, the, the original attack took place at night. Uh, it was not, it, it, we were given directions, you cannot load your rifles, no, no ammunition in the rifles. You mount by bayonets and you have grenades and it made their way up through the cliffs and, and rugged country. I think our uh, objective was to open up the, the road, the highway to Bologna. And the Mount Belvedere was taken by the 5th Army twice, and twice the Germans drove them off because they had that observation point on River Ridge. And so that's why our general said, well, before we take Belvedere, we have to take River Ridge. And that's, why, that's really why the 10th Mountain was brought in, because it was, it was considered pretty impregnable. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, we really surprised them, uh, but unfortunately at a very high cost. Yeah. Yes. I think the total for um, the 10th Mountain Division was 1,000 killed and 4,000 wounded. Bearing heavy casualties and without skis, crampons, and other gear with which they trained, the 10th made their way through the Apennine Mountains. The major movement to take the Po Valley began April 14th. By April 22nd and 23rd, the 10th had crossed the Po River with pontoon bridges and boats. They gave the mountains, or the hills, numbers. Numbers, yes. And I, and I got wounded on 909, but I, I forget the Italian name. In, in combat, I wasn't scared. You know when I was scared? When, the, when our boat pulled in to Leghorn, and I could hear the big artillery guns firing, that's when I was scared. I said, wow, you know, how can you a man defend himself against guns like that, you know? And, uh, but, but when you get in combat, you get a, an objective. The 10th Mountain ended up at Lake Garda after having traveled 105 air miles in 15 days. By May 1st, the 10th had cleared the ridges of Germans, set up a command post, and awaited orders based on German surrender. On May 7, 1945, Germany surrendered. Japan surrendered on August 14, 1945. On October 20th of that year, the 10th Mountain Division was officially deactivated. 10th members settled into civilian life, many starting the ski industry we now know. In 1985, the 10th Mountain Division was reactivated to fight in Afghanistan. Today, many of the original members of the 10th still ski and continue to shape the younger generation's knowledge and understanding of World War II. I came across a poem that I would like to read into this. This was a poem it's called Silver Skis, and it was written by a, a man who, who lost his son. <clears throat> his son was killed. Sleep peacefully, my buddy boy beneath Italian skies. No more your freckled face I'll see, and tears are in my eyes. In silent rows your buddies sleep upon that far off shore. No use to look for letters now, cause you will write no more. You gave your all, who could do more? Your courage was sublime. You were a rugged fellow, in there fighting all the time. And when this war is over, 
and the lords of nations meet. May they remember boys like you and make the peace complete. And may God give you silver skis to ski celestial hills and fishing rods and lines and reels to fish those streams and rills. <laughs>